Hey, what's going on guys? It's Necron370 here, and I'm bringing you five things you need to know about Gears 5. Uh, now, I just want to make a quick note. Uh, this is only for early game. Uh, I will be posting more of these as I uncover more about the game as I progress through it. Um, but let's start off with number five. So number five is kind of a simple one, uh, but it is actually kind of important, especially to uh, new gamers to the franchise. Uh, when you start the game, if you go down to extras and you bring that up, you will actually have two options other than credits in the um, in the extras. Uh, the first one will be um, to get caught up on the going ons in Gears Four as well as the, uh, the one beside it, which is to get caught up in everything into the Gears universe. Now what that means is if you are new to the franchise and you don't really know what's going on for the story and you don't really want to hop into the fifth game, uh, you're able to actually just watch this and get an idea of the story between Gears uh, 1 through 3. And then subsequently you're able to watch uh, what happened in um, the predecessor to Gears 5 and Gears 4 so you know exactly what happened so you don't need to play it. That's a very smart idea for, as I said, people who are new to the franchise but it also is very important for any um, Gears fan who's been with the, the franchise since the very beginning because let's be honest, it's been a long time since I played those games and yes, they're amazing and all but I'm a little hazy on all the story and if you forget to actually go down to the extras because not everybody does when they first start the game you will still be able to catch up on what happened prior to Gears 5 and Gears 4 as soon as you start the game so even if you miss it you will still at least get caught up in that but if you're wanting to get caught up in everything that's been going on in the Gears universe I would highly recommend going to your extras and checking that out. Number four, the Lancer. So the Lancer's kind of gotten a whole new update. Uh, it's gotten a new remodel with the new Mark III edition. Uh, as you can see, there's some slight variance to how it's shaped and this and that with the fire rate and recoil, etc., etc. Um, the, but the more noteworthy side of the uh, of the Lancer is its new attachment so normally you would have the chainsaw underneath the Lancer uh, now we actually have a Lancer with a grenade launcher attachment underneath. it only has three shots and you need to you need to collect explosive ammo to refill those three shots but when you have it, it is very useful it's like having a boomstick right in your Lancer And the final addition to the Lancer is not so much to the Lancer, but to the chainsaw and how the chainsaw actually works. Now, in past Gears games, you would hold the melee button, which would start your chainsaw, at least for Gears 4. I'm a little hazy on the prior ones. Um, but in this new Gears, you don't hold the um, melee button anymore. You press and hold the reload button. So it's a little bit to get used to, it might throw you off at first, but once you get used to it, you'll see how this actually enhances one of the other things on our list, which we'll be touching on, which is the combat system. But moving on. Number three. So in past games, we have all had a DB around, and we use them to open doors or help shock things. Very, very basic things. Go, Dave, go. In Gears 5, go, they've gotten a little go, bit of an go. overhaul. Um, on top of some other things that we will touch on in a little bit, one of the more noteworthy things that the DVs can now do is actually retrieve distant objects. It's known as fetching. And it's really interesting. So um, items that are out of your way or uh, out of a path that you cannot reach, you can simply aim at press and hold the action button and your DB will fly over to it, pick it up and bring it to you, drop it so you can collect it. Number two, the combat system. 
And so what I mean by the combat system is the melee cover combat system primarily. It does transfer over to the just gen, uh, generic melee um, and bridging into the execution as well. But we will start with the cover combat. So in prior Gears games, you were able to jump over cover, knock people out of it, and then uh, if you walked up to them or were close enough, you were able to press and hold or press the Y button, and you would actually be able to do the melee execution uh, style thing. I'm pretty sure that was only uh, into the Gears uh, 4 game anyways. However, if you played it like I did, you would know that it's very clunky and honestly you would never use it. It just it didn't work half the time and uh, just the way you would have to switch your hands to, to do it. And it was just not ideal, especially if you're playing on a harder difficulty uh, against the Swarm. Um, so what they've actually done in the uh, Gears 5 here is as we've touched on before with the Lancer, they've removed the um, pressing holding of the B button uh, to use your Lancer, and they've completely added in to the B button the melee system. So when you press B, you'll actually use a knife, a physical melee weapon. And now you can use that to hit enemies and get them off you, as well as um, when you get into cover and you rip an enemy out of cover, when they're standing right in front of you, because you just pulled them out of cover, you're able to just quickly press the B button and perform an execution style melee kill. Um, now on top of that system, one of the little updates on, on top of changing the execution button, uh, they also made it a little more pronounced. So when you are nearby enough, the prompt is right there and it is very hard to miss. They want you to know that you can execute them and you are at the range to do it. All in all, very, very good improvement. It really helps the close quarters combat aspect of it all. Um, and I can't wait to see how they apply it later on into the game. Now moving on to our number one slot. And if you haven't done so already, um, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We will be coming at you with a bunch more Gears War 5. Um, I know until the actual release on the 10th for everybody, we'll be trying to bring you a update on what the new things are and um, what kind of things that we're looking forward to and expecting. Like uh, One of the things I haven't touched on tonight, but is a very big touching point, is how smooth it plays and how gorgeous it looks but we're getting off track uh, don't forget to hit that like button as well uh, now back to uh, what we were talking about number one so in gears um, one two I'm not positive about three but I'm almost positive he was also in gears three the DB that we used was known as Jack uh, now, Jack was uh, subsequently destroyed or put out of commissions in the two-year gap. We didn't get him back in Gears 4. But, fear not, Jack is back in Gears 5, and he is back with an all-new look. And on top of that, he is back with an all-new ability system and upgrade systems for that ability. So you don't have just this useless DB that can unlock doors or go through places you can't and just open the door from the other side. You actually now have a fighting force with you. Now to that point, DB can go down and will need to be recovered and brought back up just like any other squad mate. But added with that, he gets a new set of abilities. So Jack's abilities are broken up into three different categories. We have Assault, Support, and Passive. Now I don't have all of them unlocked, however what I do have unlocked in the Assault allows me to flash enemies in cover and get them out of cover. It's kind of more out there, but it can help with those pesky ones that choose to just sit in cover all the time. Support is very self-explanatory. Uh, this one, however, is just 
giving you a scan of the area if there's any enemies in the area they'll be highlighted even through objects but i did ha um get far enough that i found one of the next ones and it is a stim boost which actually gives you a kind of over shield so as you get m further down they become more useful and they all have an application in the mission that you find them in Now moving on from there, we have the passive abilities. So starting off, you have his health, which is self-explanatory. You're able to increase Jack's overall health and his ability to heal others. After that, we have his stealth, which just upgrades his stealth capabilities. A little bit more of a noteworthy one, his zapper, which improves the effectiveness of his zapper. For damage range and alike and finally you have his core abilities which just pretty much increases things that he can already do ie the fetch um, sharpshooter which uh, headshot kills regenerates his abilities faster executioner same thing but with executions and savage same thing but just with kills and so there you have it, everybody. Those are the five things you need to know about Gears 5 for the early game. This is for when you're just starting off and you're not really sure. These are things you need to know so that you can have a better time and enjoy your gameplay. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't done so already, smash that like button and leave a comment below let me know what you thought about this video if you found it helpful or if you have another bit of information that people need to know for gears of war 5 early game but that's going to do it for now everybody until next time i have been necron 370 thank you so much for watching until next time stay frosty my friends Come on. Time to hook in for the drop.